If I could go back to one moment in my life, Oh, Jordan, do not cry. There was just times where my self-esteem got to a point where I didn't want to be on the earth anymore. I didn't want anything to deal with my life. I was like, why, why, what's the point if I'm always going to get told something? I'm always going to say there's something wrong with me. I was so like in a realm of people saying, this is a normal thing. This is how gymnastics is. You know, it's, you're supposed to look a certain way. It's the typical, you know, look of a gymnast, right? I'm still fighting. Like whether you see it or you don't see it, like I fight every day. There's nothing McConaughey say. Oh, all right, all right, all right. I was gonna say hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Can just imagine it in his voice. Hello, hello, hello. No. Happy Wednesday. Have you started? <laughs> yeah, that could be part of the intro. Wow. Why not? So you're gonna admit that you thought Matthew McConaughey said now, hello, hello, hello. I didn't think. I don't know what hello, I. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. Where is he from? Texas. Yeah. Okay, so his his voice makes sense then. Okay, so you just to be clear, we are using <laughs> yeah, all of this. Can, My goodness, no, no, we no. Let's it use it. Let's use it. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> oh gosh, happy Wednesday. Whew. Eleven drops. We're here. What a start. What a start. I mean, it's Matthew McConaughey. It's a great start. Yeah, great start. Let's even, get him on. Even though his words, those aren't actually. Hello, his hello, words. hello. Um, how are you doing this Wednesday? Um, I'm all right. I'm a little tired. <laughs> Anybody can tell. I, I actually just woke up from a nap. Oh, boy. Um, so I'm still coming out of that. Um, my back hurts. You did hurt your back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have some, I have nerve. I don't know what I have, but I have some sort of nerve damage or something to do with a nerve in my lower back. Yeah. And it is killing. Taylor got his back worked on yesterday, um, so he's a little a little sore today. Yeah. Probably going to run him a little bath up. This. I am. I'm going to hop in a hot bath with some Epsom salt mm. immediately after this. Yeah. But before my hot bath, we have an exciting episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have Olympic <laughs> gymnast Jordan Childs, <laughs> who we were so excited and honored to have on. Oh, my gosh. I had actually so much fun with her. She was fantastic. Like, we literally finished the interview, and I was like, that wasn't an interview. Like, it <laughs> didn't seem like work. Yeah. She was so much fun. We were laughing so much, but also had very vulnerable, uh, intimate moments, which was really cool that we got to like experience both ends of the spectrum there. And I know we say this her. a lot. Like I feel like we say it a lot, a lot, but <laughs> she's so young yet has so much wisdom. Yeah. Right. She's so yeah. young. She she just has this like just like this vibe to her. Like she's just like For sure. She's just like cool. Yeah, but she also, I mean... Has a great laugh, said, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, she was she was just all around great. Whenever we have Olympians in the studio, it just feels surreal. Yeah. That we're doing this and able to talk to people like that. Yeah. It's very cool. Like, they just have, like, a supernatural talent that, you know... They excel in, and it's crazy just to like. We filmed some TikToks. Um, Ooh, very excited. That may or may not be posted yet, but um, mm. there, there's some, there is some acrobatic talent. Yeah, um, that might be by what hurt my back. Jordan and one of the two Taylors. Mm. I'm not gonna give away which one it is. Mm. Um, but it's one of us. Okay. Well, yeah. Check the talk. It's not me. Um, but yeah, I'm as always, I'm excited for you guys to listen. But we just like went over a very wide range of topics. But I think something that I loved about this episode is getting to hear from her the separation between like Jordan the human and Jordan the Olympian. Yeah. And the struggles that she faces, you know, like she's she deals with everyday life stressors, missing family members, online bullying. Everything that we all do. And then on top of that, she is training as an Olympic gymnast at the highest level of her sport. Yeah. And like how to, how she separates those. Uh, but it was, it was a great conversation. No, it really was. Yeah. Um, and also quick little side note, if you are watching this as I was 
pointing at you at the camera. Click down and click the subscribe button, or if you're listening, just take a moment and follow us along uh, so that you don't miss our episodes each week. But I think we should dive into it. You guys are going to have a Let's lot of fun listening it's to It's worth this. it. All right. We'll see you on the other side. Jordan. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> Were you ready? <laughs> Not ready. at all. <laughs> That was very like straightforward. <laughs> yes. Thank you for being here on The Squeeze with us. We are honored to have you. No, thank you so much for having me. Honestly, this is a dream come true because I was a Team Jacob fan Let's my go. whole entire life. Oh my I gosh. still am. I love this Like for you. I would tell my siblings all the time, you know what? If there was a time where Wolverines and vampires were real, I would really be a Wolverine. And yeah. they were like, why? And I was like, because one, they run fast. And two... I could survive very easily, I feel like. I agree with you, but only one of you two can say that you're Team Jacob. So I appreciate you being here today. Uh, I was Team Edward. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Hold on. Just yeah. so what What made, how? I know. My, what I say is, I say I was too young for the abs. I wasn't like <sighs> into like abs yet. So that's my. She's that's younger my, than you. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just I think you need to be honest with yourself and just admit it had nothing to do with the abs or anything. <laughs> I think that was a factor. You think that was, you 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 saw those and you were like, <laughs> I, I want the sparkle guy. I just not the spark- <laughs> I want the glitter. Maybe you just loved glitter still. I did. Okay. I did. I danced, so I enjoyed the sparkles. Okay. We'll go with that. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> well, Thank you for your support. <laughs> really appreciate it. I'll go. You could finish it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good start. Okay. We start each episode with uh, a segment called Citrus Got Real. Okay. And in this jar of lemons, we have very random questions. If you wouldn't mind pulling one for us. Okay. Reading it sure. and attempting to answer it. Attempting to answer it. I don't know. Never know what you're going to get. Oh, jeez. This is like our ASMR drum roll. That's why we're tapping the oh mic. Oh, my gosh. Okay. This one's easy. Okay. If I could switch places with someone for a day, who would it be? Ooh. I would say either Chloe Bailey. Okay. Only because, like, having a sister like Hallie is just like, wow, cool. Like, she was a little mermaid. Like, <laughs> oh just gosh. to say that. <laughs> wow. And because her cat is so... Oh, they're oh. so cute. Um, and then another person would probably be Beyonce. I don't know. Just Fair waking enough. up and being like, hey, I'm Beyonce. Like, Oh, my gosh. Being able be to sing feeling. like her for a day. Oh, right? Or even just oh. like her kids, first off, Blue, iconic. Yeah. Crushing it. Her twins, just adorable. Like, just to be like, oh, yeah, I have an am- like, amazing life. Like, just yeah. living it. Those are good answers. I like this. Yeah, we had far we we did this question right <laughs> a little bit ago we did it yeah i i did I th- not have good oh i said i said my dog you did say your I dog said i would be remy it's probably not the best answer. i said i want to be the president just to like see if there actually is like a big red button hold on <laughs> did she really just say that you never know what like what's going on in there i can't I, tell you the white house is pretty cool i've been there oh you have yeah i did meet mr biden and Camel, it was it was great. Oh, you didn't see a button or no. anything? Okay. No. <laughs> it's probably not out in the open. <laughs> but A, we were only allowed to see certain parts of the White House. Yeah, what do those other parts look exactly. like? Exactly. So y- there could. I'm not even like into politics, but that's just something I'm kinda like. Well what yeah. president though? There's, you know, a lot. Whoever <laughs> is just like having the title of that. As being the president. Yeah. You just want to see what that day looks like. Yeah, so I mean, it wouldn't be Biden right Sounds now. Sounds stressful. So it does, honestly. Yeah. From election day all the way till would, now. I don't yeah. think I would ever. For want. one day, I feel like, and one then you day. come back to yourself, and you're okay. like, "Whoa, wow, <laughs> never Gosh. again." Yeah. <laughs> was security like top notch? Was it crazy? It was. Um, there were security almost like in f- front of like every area we were at. Um, but other than that, like, you know, there's security around, obviously, the president and the vice president. And there was since it was such like a huge thing because it was after the Olympics. So like all of Team USA gets to go see the White House. Like there oh, was cool. security, like, you know, because there was people, there was all these amazing things. But it was definitely like high end. I was very like shocked. Yeah. 
of what the White House looked like. Because, you know, you see it in movies and stuff, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's like, great. You've seen it multiple times, but in person, I was like, whoa, I'm actually at the White House. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> I don't think That's either nuts. of you are going to get this. I may have some traction over here. My date with the president's daughter. Anybody? You did get yes. some traction. It's yes. like rings a bell. My date with the president's daughter. My date. <laughs> I'll just pretend that I understood that. It's a um it's uh an old Disney Channel original okay, movie. I knew that at least. Okay. I didn't want to say it and then you'd be like, really? <laughs> really? Right? You're aging yourself. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> not, just, not really. What? I don't think you'd be aging yourself. Like making me sound younger, not up. Sorry, yeah. aging down oh. myself. You'd be aging your youth. Y yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, just out of curiosity, are you two a? Was there Disney Channel original movies? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, but what like were they? I would say mine was Cinderella with Brandy and Whitney Houston. Um, I we had full on like the actual like VCR, like we had to. Dink. Yeah. Like I I still had that. Have I not we had a Goofy seen movie. That? We had a oh, goofy movie. What's Bugs this, Life, Smart, Smart House. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's, I watched that's that. my generation too. Um, Luck of the, Luck Irish. Of the Irish. Oh, oh yeah, am I literally about to Google Disney Channel original. Um, what's some other bangers? I mean, all the Disney princesses we had. We had uh, there's so many movies. Halloween Town. Halloween Town. Yeah, that's an original. Jump in. That's an original. Oh, uh, Brink, the 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 rollerblading yes, one. Yes, we watched that. Princess Protection Program. Um, oh, I think yeah. my sisters watched that. I was too young. Xenon. Xenon. Yeah, I I know, I know it. I don't think <laughs> I I don't. Cheetah Girls. Oh my gosh. Cheetah Girls. Because we course. are sisters, we stay together. <laughs> We make up one we big family. family. <laughs> no, look the same. Our spots are different. <laughs> well, we have our trailer, everyone. <laughs> no, it I was, mean, it was when they started was singing. Na, 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 nita, na, <laughs> na, na, nita. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I was like, is, uh, what's happening? We went from English to Spanish real quick. <laughs> what? What are you even saying? Uh, it, they have a song in Spanish. They have a song in Spanish? Yeah. In the movie? Yes. Okay, oh, well, wow. we're definitely doing a TikTok to one the <laughs> Cheetah Girl song after this. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, okay, let's get back to Earth. Okay. Uh, even though these are, this is great going through all of this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was really good. <laughs> I need I to watch the Cheetah Girls. Uh, and, 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 like, and like, why was my thing is why during that time when they were singing the song, they were legit in like a club, but it was like for teenagers because it was during what their freshman, they're in high sophomore, school. yeah, sure, they were in right? high school. Yeah, I can't even remember. Oh my gosh, so the way funny. that music just like. Unlocked. That really came back to you. <laughs> uh, literally, I could have kept going, but it's probably for the best because <laughs> yeah, we would have been on Cheetah Girl way for way too long. Yeah, <laughs> I just like whip on my phone and we start dancing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, well, speaking of your siblings and watching all of that stuff, you're one of five. There's five of you. Yes. Oh, wow. I'm an only child. So wow, you don't give only child <gasps> syndrome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You I, don't give I, that. I, I agree. Thank I've you. met people who give only child like. I'm and the only child, and you know it. Like, yeah. you don't give that. That's I thought you like, at least maybe had a younger sibling or at least two older. Oh, my gosh. That's, like, the greatest the compliment. compliment. I, when, whenever <laughs> someone says that to me, I'm like, okay, I'm, like, doing something right here. So um, funny. But what was it? How close are you guys? Yeah, where all are in age? you? So I'm the youngest. Oh, okay. okay. The oldest is just turned 30 in August. Okay. Okay. There's two boys and then, obviously, three girls. And it goes girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, but the age gap is so like, because my brothers are half brothers, but we all okay. have the same dad. Okay. And so, but from my, me and my older sister, it's eight years. Okay. okay. And then everybody kind of 
lines in the middle by like two, three years. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I'm the youngest. I was spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mom, I said it. I was spoiled <laughs> really badly. But with my siblings, it was like, since the age gap was so huge, I really wasn't around them that much because okay. I also, with my sport, I was in in it all the time Yeah, yeah. with school and then gymnastics and then back home. It was just really hard. But um, by the time my sister went to college, I was only 10. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask, like, was there, like, a competitiveness, like, in the home for you to, like, you know, push harder in gymnastics mm -hmm. or, like, if... I don't know if that was Did, there because of the were age. Were any of your siblings competitive in sports? Oh, my mom was is all about sports. Okay. Like, no matter what, we had to be in a sport. She was not going to have all of her children just sitting around yeah. playing video which is not wrong. I'm not putting, hey, if you want to <laughs> play video games, e, do what you do. But my mom, <laughs> yeah. she's a sports person. Um, So my brothers did, you know, football and track. My other sister, she was actually... Um, really good at track. She was could have gone to the Olympics for track, but she decided to go into the acting oh, wow. realm. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was like, I'm done with track. I'm going to go into theater. Um, and then also my the oldest one, she did a little bit of gymnastics, but got into like basketball and track and all that. So our family is very sport oriented, yeah. but I was the only one who truly stuck with it. Um, and that was kind of, I don't want to say an issue, but it was like a huge thing with how our family was, my sister would have to like go out of her way to take me to practice because my mm. mom wasn't. So it was like during that time frame, it was kind of like I was the priority. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, with family having one person the priority, it's kind of hard really knowing how they're feeling. Yeah. Um, but as I got older now, like we always talk about it and it's just crazy to think like I thank them all the time like. You guys literally supported me and I just wasn't able to see it because I was so young. Yeah. But now it's like, no, I want you guys to understand, like, I really, really appreciate that Aww. because it's it's hard. Like, you're yeah. the youngest one of five. Yeah. And all the other ones just, I don't know. I don't know if it was because they felt like they weren't being looked at yeah. or like being looked past because they weren't cause in the same position I was in. So, yeah. yeah. But I give all the flowers to them because I don't know how they dealt with me. I'm gonna be completely honest. I was <laughs> crazy, bouncing off walls, all these different oh things. Gosh. Like it was just bananas, really. That's so <laughs> sweet of you to say. I feel like that definitely shows like your character too. Just the fact that you're able to like see that mm -hmm. you know they also like had to sacrifice. Yeah, that's really cool. And also like the sports part makes more sense now because you're named after Michael Jordan. Yes. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> I am. That's um, some, like. That's a that's a high bar. It is. <laughs> it is. I didn't truly understand it until I started getting older. Um, obviously, my mom had some crazy issues with pregnancies. And my dad was like, in those time frames, he was like, no, we're not going to have anything dealing with Michael Jordan, da, 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 all this stuff. I don't want no Jordan. I don't want no Michael. I don't want anything. And when he realized how much she was going through with um, pregnancies and stuff, I was never supposed to be born. I was mm. a miracle child and a rainbow baby. Wow. So with all that, he was just like, you do you. Yeah. You've gone through so much. And so my mom was like, Jordan, I'm going to name her Jordan. Um, but she was a huge fan. Wow. Really, really huge fan. Uh, had Almost had the opportunity to actually meet him at the Nike headquarters because my grandma, her mom, worked there. No way. And she would, you know, help with like, whether it was making sure like the security was good or, you know, getting him his stuff that he needs. So um, that's how Michael is kind of like oriented into our family. And oh, she wow. just loves basketball, sports, anything. So it's really cool to know now as I get older, I'm like, it's crazy to say that I am named after him because yeah. he is the greatest literally yeah. in basketball and anything. And just seeing how he was able to put himself in positions, whether it was, due to you know him being, being sick or due to him wanting to be done with basketball and going to a whole different sport yeah. or you yeah. know just like him and his community so i try to be like him i'm not i'm not gonna lie like i try to be like him because it was just a, such a huge inspiration for sure wow be like mike, <laughs> be like mike. <laughs> so a goal of mine for this year has been to try a juice cleanse and to complete it and if you've ever been interested in trying a juice cleanse, I need you guys to check out squeeze.com. They have some of the best juices 
the iPad. They really, they really did a good job with it. But a juice cleanse definitely kind of sounds scary. Uh, but there's def- there's there's so many benefits to doing a juice cleanse uh, that I recently learned through Squeeze.com. Of, of course, there's the physical benefits of um, weight loss, less bloat, clearer skin. But there's also the benefits of increased energy which is great because that means you don't have to drink more coffee, better sleep, breaking bad eating habits. Uh, It just gets you in a good routine and helps build discipline almost. Uh, If you guys are interested in trying out a juice cleanse from squeeze.com, you can use code the squeeze. They are offering same day local delivery or free fast delivery nationwide with code the squeeze. Check them out. Their juices are amazing. Are you trying to eat healthier in 2024? Hunger is here to rescue you from those short-lived resolutions by making meal planning easy and nutritious. I love to eat healthy, but I don't like all of the grocery shopping and the prep that has to go into that. And that is where Hunger Root comes into play. You have ingredients delivered right to your door. It's super convenient. You save time. Uh, But they also have a lot of diet options, which is great if you're trying to implement a different diet uh, in this new year. They have like actually so many dairy free, soy free, peanut free, shellfish free, gluten free, tree nut free, egg free, high protein, carb conscious and less sugar. They have absolutely something for everyone. And right now, Hungry Root is offering the Squeeze listeners 40% off your first order and free veggies for life. You can go to hungerroot.com slash the squeeze to get 40% off your first delivery and get free veggies for life. That's hungerroot.com slash the squeeze. Don't forget to use our link so they know that we sent you. So when did you, I actually know the answer to this question because I, um, do my research (laughs) and I'm also fascinated. I think it's so crazy. So you started gymnastics uh, seven. Yeah. About yeah. So okay. seven. Yeah. And that is late in the game. Yes. For most people that, you know, yes. are in your position today. Yes, for sure. Um, I had really bad, like ADHD, ADD when okay. I was younger, wow. I tried different sports, T-ball didn't work. I would hit the ball, run, woohoo, made a home run in the outfield. I'd be picking daisies. So boring. Yeah. So boring. Yeah. <laughs> But it was just like, I, you know, I helped my team win. It was cool. Um, I did track when I was, you know, my siblings would have track meets. They would have like baby track for like toddlers and stuff. And so I would do that. But gymnastics kind of stuck with me because it saved me. I always say it saved me due Mm -hmm. to there would be times where my dad would try talking to me and I just wouldn't be able to sit still and talk to him back. But when he would stop me, I would had my brain would go blank Mm -hmm. like I had nothing to say but then when he would let me go I'd be like yeah yeah doing this and all this stuff going crazy and so he didn't want it to be such a huge issue going into school when my teachers would be like hey there's like something wrong with her you know yeah um and so gymnastics at seven I started I taught myself a lot of things I would go home and I kind of just progressed really fast which is very like rare um, so by the time as levels were, you know, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then elite. So there's about eight levels. Mm-hmm. By the time I was eight, I was a level eight. By the time I was nine, I was a level nine. By the time I was ten, I was a level ten. And when I turned eleven is when I went into inter- international. Whoa. I skipped two levels throughout that whole thing. So the progression of how I was able to develop everything was just beyond yeah like fast because at set like normally people start three four years old yeah. and i'm over here seven and then in the time frame of what four three four years i'm already in the pro international area yeah because the fact that you were at an eight uh only after doing it for a year year and a half sounds kind of crazy exactly huh. what what were your parents thinking like do you know like or even, I mean, you, like, were you able to, like, 
process, process like that, that level age. of talent my parents i think it was more so of just me getting my energy out that's what i want that's all they wanted they were just like get your energy out come home and relax so funny so like that's how i was seeing it and for me i didn't really realize how fast i was progressing until i was around 13 14 years old yeah oh wow because I'm just, you know, following what my parents are saying, get all your energy out, having fun, because yeah. the sport is fun. I'm not going to lie. It's You feel like you're flying. You're feeling like, you know, you're a superhero and all this. Mm. But in the time frame of a like 11, 12-year-old mindset, you don't really think about that. Yeah. You just think about, okay, yes, I have another competition to compete at. Yes, I have another practice to go to. Yes, I have homework to do. But as I got older, it was just like, whoa. Were I tell still... people all the time, just like, take your time, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Were you still like in school or were you homeschooled at all during this? That's another thing. Um, during my time, um, I was the only one who actually went to school. Okay. I had to. I'm a very social, like outgoing. Like I will introduce myself even if I don't know who you are. Like I would just be like, hi, I'm Jordan. Like, nice to meet you. And then move on with my day. Yeah. Um, But I that was one thing I told her. We tried homeschool. I couldn't do it couldn't mm. focus couldn't do anything because i needed the you know interaction with teachers i needed the interactions with people and just you know getting my social life how i wanted it and i didn't want to be in a position where i did go to college and be like um this is the first time i've been in a classroom yeah i didn't want that i wanted to make sure when i did you know go off to college i'd be like okay yeah i've done this before i've done my sport and school before yeah, yeah. when or at any point I mean, I'm assuming you did stop going to public school. When, like, did you ever stop going to public school? No, I never stopped. Or going to school, I guess I should say. No, I never stopped. Um, I did K through 12, all of public school. Um, it was times where I would have to probably do, like, an online class, like, yeah. whether it was something that I needed for college. Like, my um, language I did online. Yeah. Um, I did extra sciences online. I did an AP class online. I did an honor roll class online. Um, so it just, it was dep like depending on what I needed that year. Yeah. But other than that, I went to public school. Like I, my teachers understood that if I had to leave early, I need to leave early. Oh. They understood that, um, That's if good. I had to, you know, go to a whole different state to compete, they would give me my homework for that week. My principal was honestly like the best principal anyone oh could gosh, ask for. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, my, my middle school, high school and elementary all knew. They all understood that it wasn't just, you know, like what people say, you go and you jump around on equipment. They actually understood like I was actually doing something. Yeah. So, but now, yeah, in my high school, now I have my own shadow box. Oh my gosh. Which is pretty cool. Let's and go. I wouldn't be like how I am now if it wasn't for like, you know, everybody understanding what I needed for myself. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> it's really cool. And I mean, I had similar experiences. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, star I started competing in martial arts at a young age and, you know, we had a tournament once a month um, and I would miss a lot of mm -hmm. school and stuff and have to like, you know, make up stuff and do stuff on my own while I was gone. And it was hit or miss for me. So I had some teachers that were like dreams and some teachers that were like, no, we're not mm -hmm. playing that game. And it was it was challenging at, at times. So that's that's really cool that they were like it feels like you had like a team behind you just mm -hmm. like supporting you. For sure. My thing is like for you in that situation, like how did you really control like your feelings when your teachers told you like, no. Like, I'm not going to allow you to do this because it was like a dream of yours, right? You wanted to do yeah. martial arts. Like, how did you personally in that moment really react? I mean, I, I was pretty young um, and I think my parents did a good job at like keeping that away from me. I think like mm -hmm. I maybe knew that something was going mm -hmm. on, but they weren't fully like filling me in. Like they were dealing with the the drama the brunt of the, of the yeah. yeah yeah so i don't think i fully understood at the time exactly what was going on because mm -hmm. they just wanted to keep me focused yeah yeah um was there like a point for you like as you're like progressing and like like did you know you wanted to like go to the olympics like doing gymnastics like because it was just like your fun like mm -hmm. getting energy out like when when were you like oh wait like 
I'm actually really good at this, and this is something this like I should like. Could be a real like... thing other than just getting my energy out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So the 2008 Olympics happened, and it was a times if I remember, we would always like the Olympics is something that's like family. Mm. Our family would come together. We would watch every single sport: track, tennis, golf, whatever the sport is, and we would watch it from. The beginning till like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So gymnastics had came on, and obviously that's my sport because at that time I was what seven years old. Yeah, seven years old, and I was just sitting there watching. I was like, "Oh, it's so cool, great!" And I had told my mom, I was like, "Mom, I want to go to the Olympics," and she was like, "Really?" And I was like, "Yeah." I said, but in that moment, I didn't just want to go to the olympics because of my sport i was just like i want to go because they're winning cool things they're winning medals they have you know (laughs) the ability to be in front of the world and competing and everybody's watching like that's so cool so in that moment it wasn't for gymnastics not at all Mm. i didn't realize until i want to say around 14 15 years old Okay. okay i was like oh i actually can do something with this i actually could go to the olympics for the sport like that's just crazy in general because at the end of the day like again in my mind i was just trying to get my energy out when i was younger and so everything kind of just progressed in okay my mindset changing my mindset being like okay if you really want to do this you're gonna have to change some things within yourself yeah so that was you know eating that was getting to a point where I could just, you know, be okay with how my practices were going because I knew there would be better days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So around that time, everything kind of was just like, okay, I know 20, I missed the 2016 Olympics by four months, which is kind of sad because Oof. I was like, man, I could have been in 2016 Olympics. But again, everything hap- I think everything happens for a reason. So yeah. knowing that 2016 and all that stuff, like I wasn't able, my mindset was just on 2020. Yeah. And so... um from there, from being 15 years old until now, my mindset had always been Olympics, Olympics, Olympics. Like, my sport, this is my sport. I can't change anything. I'm going to do what I'm doing at the Olympics, basically. Yeah. But, yeah, 15, 14, 15 years old is when I was, like, gymnastics, Olympics? Huh, okay. Let's do it. Might as well. I'm <laughs> in it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even, like, like, even try to, like, process thinking that at that age. Yeah. Anything remotely close to that. Yeah, it's it's a crazy. Level. Yeah, because I, I ask fifteen year olds now, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you know, I'm just enjoying myself doing this." And I'm like, "At fifteen, what was I doing? Yeah. Like, I was uh, going on airplanes by myself to you know national team camps. I was traveling here, going to Germany, Italy, all these things." And I'm like, "That's not what normal fifteen year olds do." Yeah. yeah. Unless you are a celebrity kid, but other than that, yeah, it was just, it's crazy just to even think about now, like, just everything that I've gone through from the time I started until now. It was nonstop. Do you ever, because this is something that I've, um, you know, battled with, do you ever, slash, do you still ever feel like you missed out? Do you, at at the time, still today, are there things in life because of the path that you have conquered? Are there other things that you feel like you missed out on and you would want to like not not go back and change mm-hmm. anything, but just m- miss out on? Um, I would say yes. I feel like I miss out on a lot of friendships um, that I could have had. But since my sport was so demanding, it's something that I couldn't control. Yeah. Um, I feel like I missed out on a lot of school activities that, you know, I feel could have helped me in the long run. Um, I mean, I was, which was the best thing I feel like any gymnast could really do is go to their school dances. Like I was able to go to prom. I was able to go to like, you know, homecoming and all that. But there are a lot of things that I wish like birthday parties. I wish I Mm. was able to go to more often. Um, Family vacations. It was a mandatory thing, but could we go every single time? No. Yeah. Um, sister trips, like, you know, cousin trips, seeing all my family, like at times where everybody just had to leave me, um, there, it, it was a struggle. I mean, it's still a struggle now. Like, there's an, I still can't really do as many things as I wish I could. Yeah. Because of what 
my sport has like basically in place for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. But again, I think the only reason why it's so like that, whether it's, you know, in any world of art, whether it's, you know, you're acting, you're in music, in a sport, I think it's just because, like, everybody's path has its own way of leading to something that, at the end, will be able to experience those things, but with a better understanding. Because yeah. I feel like if in that moment we did do those things, it would be like, okay, cool, this was great. But, like, now I feel like it's like, okay, if I do go on this vacation, it's because I earned that. It's because I was able to, you know, experience the things that I want to experience with my family or with my friends. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's great. Very true. Do you, do you feel like it's ever difficult to, like, s- separate, like, Jordan, like, the, like, human and, mm-hmm. like, Jordan the Olympian with, you know, you know, stressors from, like, home life or mm-hmm. whatever, like, personal stuff with, you know, the stressors and the pressure of, like, training and everything that mm-hmm. you have to go through, like, to be at the level that you're at? Um, It took me a while. I had to learn that um, to separate the two. It took me a while. Recently, I would say only four years ago is when I found that out. Mm. Oh, wow. Figured out how to separate the Jordan, who's an Olympian, and the Jordan, or even before I was an Olympian, like the Jordan just just an athlete and the Jordan that's family, friends, you know, yeah. community. Sister, daughter. Exactly. Yeah. Niece, um, cousin, all that stuff. So with the time that I had of me being my sport, people only saw me as an athlete, yeah. which I never understood. I was like, I'm more than just that. Yeah. But maybe... Since I was always told, you're an athlete, you're an athlete, you're an athlete from like a million different people. It was just like, okay, then maybe I am just an athlete. So going home is all I thought was, I'm just an athlete. Mm -hmm. You talk about your sport all the time. But then as I got older, I was like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Because there is more to me. There's more than just me going, waking up and going to practice. I come home, I'm a daughter. I'm a dog mom. I'm, you know, somebody who enjoys talking to their friends like those are those type of things that I feel like kind of just were like stripped and I wasn't able to use my voice on um so now I can separate the two I go home my mom asked me one question I'm like "Mm, sorry not today yeah I don't want to talk about my sport like I'm sorry I have meetings to do I have you know other things because even yes I constantly talk about my sport and interviews and all that stuff, which is fine because that's who I am. And that's what I know. Like I am somebody who did go to the Olympics, somebody who, you know, has this amazing platform. But at the end of the day, I'm only one Jordan. Yeah. I'm only the Jordan that you see in the public eye. I'm only the Jordan that's going to be authentic to herself and authentic to the world. I'm not going to change what you see on social media I'm not going to change how I talk or whatever it is when you see me in person like I know how to you know be okay with who I am so it's 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 interesting it's very interesting I'm not gonna lie it's very interesting because when I did find that out I was like well this is what it feels like not having to think about other things you can just go home and watch tv and cook yourself a good meal lay down and relax without thinking about your sport yeah and once I figured that out from there on i was like yeah yeah this i should have done this a long time ago (laughs) yeah i know it takes it takes a while like in life for everyone to figure out the balance and also figure out boundaries like Mm -hmm. setting those boundaries is so difficult sometimes but as soon as you like realize you're like oh i can say no to that oh i can like set that boundary it's like Life is a little bit more enjoyable. Exactly. (laughs) I mean, I always wondered because like as as an athlete, like I know you you were in acting and you're an actor and all that. Like how did that determine like when did that phase of you being like, oh, wait, I don't always have to say yes to everything. Yeah. For me, it was more so decide like I was making decisions based off of what I thought other people wanted me to do. Mm. Um, Expectation. Yeah. And like, yeah, instead of viewing it as I want to be successful in my own eyes, I want to be successful in my family's eyes. I was going, 
what's the right next move for me? Mm -hmm. What do, you know, my agents and managers want me to do? What do the fans want me to do? What do the critics want me to do? Well, if I do this, you know, I really want to do this. It would be fun, but the critics will probably say that's a stupid move and I need to go some, do some like little, you know, indie. Um, For a long time, that was my point of view and how I was making decisions. And I think it eventually led to unhappiness. Um, and it, that eventually led to me having to take a a step back and just saying, I'm done with this for now. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if I will come back, Mm -hmm. I'll figure that out. But, um, yeah, that was the bigger problem for me was just making choices like for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. So as you guys have heard it by now, I definitely have some big, uh, goals and resolutions uh, put in place for this new year, like working out more, drinking more water, eating healthier, all that good stuff. Um, but another one of my re- New Year's resolutions is to help get clear skin and healthier skin in 2024. That's why we are so excited to be partnering with Apostrophe, whether you're dealing with hormonal acne, breakout, signs of aging, acne, scarring, Apostrophe's mission is to empower you and help you feel confident and comfortable in your own skin. Um, Apostrophe is an online platform that connects you with an expert dermatology team to get you a customized treatment plan for your unique skin, uh, which is great because everyone has such different skin and there are so many different products on the market And that is why I love apostrophes because they work with you specifically for your skin. And we have a special deal for our listeners today. You can get your first visit for only $5 at apostrophe.com slash the squeeze. When you use code the squeeze, that's saving of $15. This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, go to apostrophe.com slash the squeeze and click get started. Then use our code the squeeze at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. Thank you, Apostrophe, for sponsoring this episode. So this year I have been trying to get out of the house more to work out, whether that's taking the dogs on a walk, going on a hike, no matter what the terrain is. And that is why I have been loving my Vessi shoes. Uh, Not only are they cute, they're very cute, but they're also waterproof, which is amazing because we have been getting some rain here. And I don't have to worry about my shoes getting wet. I can take the dogs out whenever. I can go on hikes whenever, jump in puddles. I can be fine. And I'll stay comfortable. They are lightweight. They're easy to get on and off. And they're super easy to clean, which is great because Taylor tends to get his shoes pretty dirty. Bessie's lineup, especially their everyday classic, which is my favorite, and Chelsea, offers unparalleled comfort for all day wear. Their lightweight, breathable design means you can move through your day from work to evening walks without any discomfort. Vessi is the epitome of comfort meeting style. If you're interested in trying out Vessi, you can visit Vessi.com slash the squeeze for footwear that will gear you up for the whole year around. And you can get 15% off your first order with code the squeeze. That's Vessi.com slash the squeeze. What are like some of your hobbies or whatever your favorite thing to do is to just kind of like release? Like what what do you do to like turn off? Like what are your favorite activities or even if it's just sitting, staring at your TV? (laughs) Um, Because I feel like that probably that's probably important to still keep like you have to be able to have the release to still like have like your drive Mm -hmm. for your sport because of how intense it is. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I'm a sneakerhead. I don't know if you can tell. Oh, I can tell. Um, so (laughs) for me, it's, I know it's like really bad, but retail therapy and shopping just in general. (laughs) Um, (laughs) talking to the right person. (laughs) Sometimes though, it's crazy because a couple times I've done this, I'll just go to a car lot like a dealership and just look at cars yeah like don't ask me why that's even a thing like sometimes i would just be like you know what i'm just gonna stop at this dealership real quick and just look at cars like (laughs) i'm gonna buy one that day or something um you aren't in need of a car you just (laughs) no like just i just like well i love cars like i love motorsports like anything like that um so that's something that i really enjoy um but besides that 
Um, I really take time to myself. I learned about time management my freshman year of college. And once I realized that, I was like, where was this all along? Being able to take time to yourself, whether it's getting a massage, whether it's doing facials with your friends. Um, a lot of the time, I will just sit back and watch Netflix. Um, one thing that really helps me is going on Pinterest. Mm. I don't like social media. Yeah. I dislike social media okay. so much. Even though it is a part of you know my business, it's a part of what I do. Um, but the only social media I will use is Pinterest. Wow. And for some reason, just like the thought process of creating things, because I do have a very interesting, like creative mind, whether it's within um, designing stuff, whether it's within, you know, just one time I was on a plane and I started creating a play. Don't ask me how. And then it turned into like a movie. It was just, I just get very creative. Yeah. So with Pinterest, it kind of lets my creativity like just explore a lot of different things so um those are like kind of the things i sometimes will like go downstairs and draw i like drawing i wow. like i figured out during covid that i actually could draw it was very interesting covid times was very interesting for me but um yeah those are like the simple little things besides you know i've talked to sports psychologists to get my mental in the right spot i've talked to you know family members um going to deep conversations that's one thing I love to do, like mm. just getting pieces of advice from like each and every person, whether you know what you're talking about, or you don't, but you're like pitching in. Yeah. Um, it just makes my mind like really turn into different directions. Um, but other than that, it's really shopping is the, the go for me. There you go. <laughs> I love that. I'll, I'll go shopping one day. Meet you on Rodeo real quick. <laughs> oh my gosh. You <laughs> tell me when. I will be there. Perfect. I will be there. Did um did anything ever happen social media wise that made you take a step back or are you just like proactively protecting yourself from, you know, the downfalls of social media? So, my mom had my social media for the first like I want to say when I turned 17, she finally let my social media, like, I can have it. Okay. Um, which I think was for the better. Yeah. Because I feel like nowadays with all these influencers, like, you know, with body shaming, with, you know, looking a certain way, with, there's just a lot of things that go into it. But for me personally, there were a lot of things. Um, I got bullied. Um, I've gotten threats. Um, I've gotten inappropriate pictures sent to me. Um, but this was only all said to me by my mom because she was controlling it and she had to, um, you know, protect me from that, which I'm so thankful for because still to this day, sometimes I'd be like, you had my social media for this long and da, 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 like all this stuff. But again, like I can only give her her like motherhood yeah. to an extent because she was trying to protect me from what was being said. Yeah. Um, so nowadays I just feel like social media has taken a turn now because it's became such a huge platform for a lot of people. And I feel like authentic, like being authentic to who you are is something that people will never recognize, whether you tell the truth on social media and they still think that you're lying in real life. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's also like, I'm always in the forefront. I'm always in people's eyes 24 seven. Like we're in yeah. entertainment. So it's the expectation, right? It's the expectation of looking a certain way that I just don't like. I don't, I call them bully bots. No, like you're That's sitting cute. on your couch eating potato chips, looking at me for why? Yeah. yeah. Just to criticize something that you may not have, which I understand. I get it. Not everybody has the same exact thing. Not everybody has the same, you know, lifestyle. Not everybody has the same path that, needs to be taken but at the end of the day if you are criticizing somebody else i think you should go look at yourself in the mirror and find out what the real problem is yeah. because normally the real problem is within yourself For so sure. that's how i see social media and i just kind of you know i take setbacks i do yeah all the time like i've gone ghost one time and the only way you could communicate with me was if you had my number um I've gone, you know, just to a point where I don't like posting all the time. Like, if you think me, like, if you're only following me because I post 24-7, then obviously you don't know who truly I am. Because yeah. if you're only following me because I do a sport, then that's an issue. If you're only following me because, you know, you're, you're choosing sides, then I feel like, okay, so then you're not truly knowing who I am mm -hmm. as a person because there's more to me. So that's, social media has just kind of been like, eh, 
okay. But yeah. again, it's a business thing. It's just a part of the job. It's a part of the job. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's a part of everything that you're doing now, whether it's with your agent, whether it's with PR, whether it's a sponsorship, whether it's with, you know, just within yourself, because that's yeah. your income. I get that. Yeah. But if I had to choose to just let social media go, I would. And stick to Pinterest. Exactly. <laughs> I would stick to Pinterest and just pin myself away. <laughs> well, that's that's great advice and such a good like outlook for for people to hear. Um, you touched on it, and I want to bring it up. Um, if you're comfortable sharing the story, we talk about body shaming a lot on the podcast mm-hmm. because that is something that you know Taylor has had his fair share of. Um, with stuff i mean we both have dealt with it but obviously you on a much bigger scale than me um i know that you mentioned you know being body shamed and i know there was like a situation something Mm -hmm. happened with the former coach do you mind Mm -hmm. sharing yeah of course um i had a coach who verbally um abused me and emotionally abused me um i was body shamed to an extent to where i look at pictures now and i say wow i was told i looked like a sack of potatoes when i was a literally looked like a twig how old were you yeah, um the crazy part is is i was so blindsided that i don't even know like what age i was yeah um i was so like in a realm of people saying this is a normal thing yeah this is normal with every coach that you get coached by. This is how gymnastics is. You know, it's you're supposed to look a certain way. It's the typical, you know, look of a gymnast, right? Oh. Mm-hmm. So if you didn't look like that, you are told, you know, either you're you're fat, either for me, I have a a backside that I'm I'm African American. I can't control what happens, you know, like I don't look like everybody else. So with that, it was just I want to say probably around 10, 11 years old is kind of when um, it got such an issue. But when I, f- when I first started, um, she didn't believe my mom was my mom. I'm half Latin and black, so I'm Afro-Latina. My mom brought me in the gym, and she was like, this is not your daughter. My mom was like, what are you talking about? She's like, this is not your daughter. She doesn't like, what is what do looks got to do with anything, right? I didn't know this. I was just like, hey, I'm in the gym, right? Yeah. But with the body shaming situation, I've gotten told um, I had two heads because of my hair. Um, I look like a sack of potatoes. Um, There was one point I was called Tinkerbell. Never knew why I was called Tinkerbell. Um, But there was just times where my self-esteem got to a point where um, I didn't want to be on the earth anymore. Um, I didn't want anything to do with my life. I was like, why, why, what's the point if I'm always going to get told something? I'm always going to say there's something wrong with me. Um, so it was so bad with her that it got to a point where I just kind of told my mom, like, I don't know what she's doing, but it's not good. I can't look at food and be like, oh yeah, I'm going to eat it. Like I don't eat already. Like I, I, feel like I can't have, you know, ice cream when everybody else is having ice cream. Like, yeah, there was just a lot of things that she kind of stripped from me. Um, I'm still working through it. There are times where if you say one wrong thing, I will be like, OK, I'm done. Yeah. Like, oh, you're eating this today. Mm, I'm sorry. No, not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So it's just like that abuse that she had put on me was just like to yeah. a max. So bad. Yeah. But yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm, I mean, (laughs) I'm so sorry that you had to go through that because I can't imagine like having that at that. When it's instilled in you that young, it, it's not just like you can snap your fingers and it goes away. Like Mm -hmm. that is going to be like, the reality is that is going to be something that you will, you know, be working through Mm -hmm. for probably a while because I mean, I, that's that's how I feel. But like, I mean, gymnastics as a sport in general is it's maybe the most judgmental sport there is. Like, it's literally judgment, <laughs> like yep. in every aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's hard enough, I would imagine. But then having stuff like that on top of the sport itself, um, yeah, that's that's something that you know requires work. It sure. does. I got weighed. 
Oh gosh. Just a yep. I got weighed. Um, you gain one pound, she would weigh you. Um, I had to be under a certain weight. Yeah. There was actually a lot of things. Uh, I got smoked out in the car. Huh? She smoked cigarettes and left me in the car while smoking a cigarette. I've gotten left in the airport. Um, there was just a lot of things that happened within, not just the abusing part of body shaming, but also just as being a young child. Yeah. How how have you been able to, like, heal from that? Like, what what steps or what have you... What has helped you heal from that? God, really. Mm. Praying every day, having the right support um, around me. My circle got really small. Um, when I first came out, was was on another um, podcast. It was the first time I was after Tokyo. I was like, you know what? I think I just need to speak about what happened mm. because it's eating me out, like, all the time. Mm. So when I was able to do that... Um, from there on, I was just like, okay, like I can talk about this. There's been friends, well, used to be friends, ex friends now, who came at me and said, she never did this, da da da. And I was like, you can protect her all you want. But at the end of the day, I know what she did to me. Yeah. You know, so knowing that um, I had my family, my mom apologized to me so many times. She was like, I'm so sorry. I never saw that. I was like, you didn't know really either. Yeah. There was family, like other parents telling you it's normal. Like, right. yeah. You can't do anything about that. Um, but definitely would have to say, like, it, God was something that I, he was by my side through the whole entire thing. Mm. Parents, friends that, you know, understood where I was coming from. And even my teachers, they would know. They'd be like, are you okay? I'm like, wow. yeah, I'm good. I just got to, you know, push through what I'm going through and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I know I have a place to be on this earth for a reason and yeah. so I think that's another thing is and also understanding my story is so unique and different and making sure that the generation underneath me understands that your life isn't perfect but once you put those right pieces into play everything will be how it's supposed to be I love that um is there like any advice that you could give someone listening right now that is maybe you know being bullied online dealing with body shaming um advice like now looking back having dealt with that like what advice you would give to them um I would say use your voice um talk to people whether it's a family member whether it is a sports psychologist whether it is you know somebody that you may not know because it's easier to talk to somebody you don't know because they can understand mm. you um so and also knowing that it's your your life nobody can control it you can only control what you do within yourself so if you want to you know be you know, have your times where you do grieve, where you are sad and all that, but also understand that everybody's put on this earth for a reason. And if you know your reasons are the right ones, then just keep pushing towards that because that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I wanted to prove people wrong. I wanted to prove people that it's okay to look the way you look and still succeed what you want to do. It's okay to be the person you are and go on and live your life how it's supposed to be. Um, so just always remember uh, it's my quote actually is always believe in the power of your dreams because mm. your dreams are very powerful. They are, they're very immaculate. They, they can go on however long you want them to go, but always know that your dreams are your dreams and nobody else's. I love that. Amen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that I literally said that so many times <laughs> in my head as you were talking. <laughs> so, um, this is like, it's a simple question, but a loaded one. And it could literally be anything from, like life to Olympics to whatever. Mm -hmm. Is there an accomplishment or something that you are most proud of yourself for? Staying true to myself. Yeah. Mm. Um, Cause there was, there were a lot of doubts. There were a lot of times where I did want to quit within my sport. Obviously, you know, I did have a lot of um, suicidal thoughts, not being on being here and all that stuff, but just being true to myself and true to what my passion and my dedication is. Um, and then also just, you know, fulfilling something that I've always wanted since I was little, whether people were picking at me, poking me, throwing things at me, like it just depend on, you know, how strong I could be. Yeah. So, um, just fighting, continue mm -hmm. to fight. And, you know, I'm still fighting, like yeah. whether you see it or you don't see it, like I fight every day 
making sure, you know, I'm good, my family's good, you know, my support system understands. And same with my fans. So mm. just being the best version of myself. I love that. I love that <laughs> so good much. answer. Um, before we move on to Le- Lemon 7, um, what about what about goal? What's what's your next? Do you have what what's your next goal? My next goal besides 24. That's coming quick. Huh? It is coming quick. How are you feeling? I'm excited. I'm really excited just to see what this year has in like intel for me. Um, it's a new chapter. Every year for me is a new chapter. Yeah. Um, obviously, 23, I can't wait to leave behind because um, I did have some very interesting family situations at the beginning of the year and then not too long ago. So just knowing that hopefully 24 will be a new beginning, a new chapter that is just filled with excitement, enjoyment, you know, fun things like this and me being me. So I'm really excited for 24. But right. other than that, I don't know. I mean, there's so many things that I feel like I want to do within my life. I'm only yeah. 22. Yeah. Um, I have a car. I bought my parents a house. Like there's so <laughs> many things. I want to go into real estate. Wow. Um, I want to do things to help the community, um, whether it's building like homeless shelters, whether, you know, just mm-hmm. things that I can make sure like everybody's okay. Even though my dad always tells me, you can't save everybody. Yeah. I know that, but at the end of the day, like if I try to, it makes me feel so much better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you ever like do something like, let's say, you know, you're older, you know, you've hung up your leotard. <laughs> would you do, would you do something artsy? Like you, like you have go such in- a creative brain. Like, well, I do like fashion. Okay. Um, I've always wanted to, you know, design something within like a designer, whether it's like a Louis, a Chanel, just something that's creative that has came from like my line of Leos that I have. Um, or like just something that just let my brain go. Yeah. Um, but I think the more creative side, like if I did, it would probably be interior design. Mm. Yeah. I love, love designing like houses and all that stuff. Like just me being me, just letting my mind go is just the craziest thing. Um, I mean, I've thought of doing, you know, a clothing brand. I've thought of doing other type of like artsy things. Um, I used to play music. Um, oh, wow. I played the clarinet, so that's another like yeah. I was first chair, you and got, I did you marching got some band. Fun facts. <laughs> I do. How did you have time for that? <laughs> exactly. I made sure I had time. I had to make sure I had time. I did marching band for four years. I was first oh, wow. chair in my cl- in for clarinet. Um, I did saxophone too. Wow. Yeah. So if I did, I mean, honestly, I would probably go into if I could go back to music as an art. I would wow. I would go back to music and maybe do like jazz or something. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go back to our Citrus Got Real question. I'm gonna be you for a day <laughs> because I feel like one, I would be able to do all these fun flips and things. <laughs> but then also be that cre- like I just you're I love your mind and just like how it how it works yeah you know how when she was a kid they they would bring her to the gym so she could get her energy out like now it's like we got to bring her mind to places so we can let her mind just fly yeah literally (laughs) there's been times where i'll just sit on the couch and be like okay so this is what i want to do and my dad or my mom will look at me and be like huh i kid you not i was like okay so what if there was this you know show whether it's a TV show or a movie, somebody, you know, however I pitch it. And it's basically this girl, she's living a life, a normal life. She's in high school and all this stuff. But her superpower is whenever she closes her eyes, her dreams come to reality. Oh. She falls in love with this mistress that's in her dream, but doesn't know how to explain it to her boyfriend that's in the real world. Oh. So, like, her worlds are colliding in a way. And I had told my parents, like, I wrote the whole script out and everything. Of course I was, you did. <laughs> I literally wrote the whole script out and everything. Like, it's actually pretty funny. Um, and I had told my parents this, and they were like, what? Like, where did you even get this? It's yeah. like my mind just, one day I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to write a script on the plane because I couldn't go to sleep. I was just like, da da And, the, and the, the, um, the movie or the film or whatever it would be, it would be called The Dreamer. Okay. So we got a if, that, here. <laughs> if that ever comes out, you know, you guys are the first to know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, yeah, my mind just, it, it's nonstop creative. Like, wow. I love that. Yeah. Dang. 
That's so funny. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be you. Um, so we have this little segment called Lemon 7. It's just seven fun questions. You can rapid fire them. You can go an explanation, whatever your heart desires when you okay. I like that. hear the question. Lemon, lemon 7? Lemon 7. I love seven that. lemons. All right. Number one. Okay. What movie or song title best describes your mental health today? Ooh. She's like my film. <laughs> yeah, the dreamer. dreamer. <laughs> um, I would have to say Beyonce's I'm That Girl. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Love it. I think that would really describe like where I'm at with my mental and like who I am. Yeah. I love that. Good answer. Um, number two is how open are you with the people in your life when struggling? I am very open. It took me a while, but now that I have under- like understand that they understand me, um, I'm very open. Wow. I'm definitely more open to my siblings than I am to my parents sometimes because sometimes I feel like the topics I talk about can't really be seen in a certain way, but my siblings sure. could understand a little better. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm open. They basically almost know my whole entire life. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That's so great. Okay, this might be a tough one for We'll you. change it to Pinterest. I, I know. The question was gonna be if you could only follow three social media accounts. What would they be on any platform? But it could be Pinterest. any platform, like social media accounts. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, who would you like if you could only follow three of them? Oh my gosh. Okay, so on TikTok, I would do Monet McMichael. Do you know who that is? She's like an influencer. I don't know. She the name does. Sounds, oh, Susan's do like, you know yeah. who she is? Period. I probably I know love her, her if I saw her. I'm so bad um, at names. Do you know who Jalen? Um, You're gonna keep saying all these names, and I'm not gonna know. His last name's Nobo. How do you say his last name? Yeah, he was on Love oh. Island. Oh, yeah. So Are they're you a they're together. Junkie? Oh, I love reality Same. TV shows. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> keeping up with the Kardashians, or how did I say the Kardashians now? Um, uh, so yeah, I would choose her on TikTok. Um, I would probably choose for like if Instagram. Ugh, that's social media platform. Instagram, I would probably choose like one of my favorite artists. I'd probably do Meg Thee Stallion though. Cause okay. her, she does her reels and they're so hilarious. But then she also like posts her normal life. Right. So I think it, that would follow. be yeah. And then on Twitter, I would do People's Magazine because they just are funny and crazy, mm. and they always make things up. So. <laughs> and they always make things up. <laughs> I feel like they'd be making stuff up. Sometimes I'd be looking like, is that real or are you just you making that up? You never know. But yeah, you never know. Keep that's you on your toes. That's for right. Sure. But like, I mean, I have the. Well, if you think about it, the three, I can go deeper because the three that I chose, one, Monet, she is an influencer. So she does her beauty. She does her home. So I could get the entertainment from that of understanding, okay, beauty. Then Megan, she's an artist. And she also is becoming an actress now, too. So it's like it's like her daily life. But also I could still listen to her music. And then People Magazine, it's like I can get all the politics in the world. Yeah. You got everything. Exactly. Look at that. You're good to go. Wow. Yeah. Wow, it's almost right. like you planned that answer. <laughs> I really did it. <laughs> she came prepared. <laughs> okay, number four is what is your favorite form of self care? Mm, massages. Oh, girl. Or yes. like facials. Well, yep. you too. If there need was to a. Hang out. <laughs> yep. yeah, I'm down. <laughs> gonna get a massage. We're gonna go shopping right. after. <laughs> get a facial. <laughs> Might as well go get a mani pedi. <laughs> yep. Everything. Yep. Um, but yeah, definitely. Like, if I had more time to be able to do those things. You would probably like, where's Jordan? Oh, she says massage. <laughs> okay. Leave you there. Hey, that's important for your job. Oh, tell me about it. Body <laughs> aches. Hers 24/7. are probably just like painful, like sports massages. No. They're relaxing? They're so relaxing. Yeah, she gets those like no, I'm on saying, the daily. Sorry, that's what I was saying. Yeah, the daily, the daily ones, you're probably getting like rubbed out and it hurts. Right? No, I'm actually, and I've you're probably done. probably so used to it now? No, um, I'm actually... I've never met anybody who's ever done a pressure point massage. Have you uh-huh. heard of those? Uh huh. Pressure point massages. Uh-huh. Yeah. So the very first time I got a pressure point massage, apparently I didn't flinch. I didn't do anything. I fell asleep actually. Yeah. Okay. So like those type of massages, I enjoy. So a deep tissue massage mm-hmm. from your local spa, you would just be like, "Can yep. you go harder?" Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're gonna need different massages <laughs> because I'm literally <laughs> like, "Don't touch me!" <laughs> like it hurts. I'm such yeah, a baby. You are the. That's opposite. how my mom is, though. My mom is very like sensitive in that way. Like, but it's only because like, I think it's the way 
as athletes, it's a little different because our muscles are always tight no matter what. Yeah. So when we get them rubbed out, the pain isn't because like, oh, we're getting pushed on. It's more so of like, oh, that muscle is getting released yeah because of yeah. how tight it is yeah yeah no i'm like literally i'll be like can you go really light on my traps <laughs> yeah. i'm like don't touch them no honestly sometimes you're like can you just tickle <laughs> I, I do don't not even want the that. massage i, I just want to tickle say that you just not scratch <laughs> hey i love a good tickle scratch yeah I know. but i also love a just a relaxing massage, massage yeah i can do those ones too <laughs> i can i'll just relax and i will tell you it was good because normally they are yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh <laughs> okay number five what would you say is the most misunderstood thing about you? My personality. Okay. Um, I feel like people say that I all of a sudden like changed my personality from when I was younger. Okay. Hmm. Um, only because like now like within my sport, I smile, I laugh, I jump, I dance on the side of like our events or whatever. But it's like I've had that within myself. It was yeah. just I was shut down yeah. Yeah. at a young age. Yeah. So I think that's one thing. Maybe my personality. Yeah. I mean, is it? Oh, and that I'm mean. <sighs> oh. Okay. Yeah. People I've gotten multiple times. Oh, my gosh. Like, I'm not going to lie, but I <laughs> thought you were mean when I first met you. I was like, do I give, like, an R- like what? what's my face? RBF. This is my <laughs> RBF, like. I was going to say, you've been really mean to us today. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. so sorry. <laughs> I guess I guess the truth is out now, guys. She is super mean, and she doesn't laugh or smile or joke at all. <laughs> Never. <laughs> but yeah, so those serious. are like the two things that I've. They're like, yeah, you, you know, your personality is just different. It's social media, I swear. Yeah, it yeah. is social doesn't media. Help. Doesn't help at all. Yeah, I think people are just jealous of like how cool you are. You just like have like a cool I'm not energy. That cool. You <laughs> have a cool energy about you. And I think people are probably like, oh, that's scary. She's cool. That's probably the energy. Well, like, what are we gonna do? Yeah. Uh number six is who has had the most positive impact on your mental health? Um I would say everyone that's spoken about it. Um from Simone to Serena Williams to Naomi Osaka to even Michael Jordan when people really didn't know that he was truly talking about it. Um to a bunch of artists, actually, from uh, one recently was Chloe Bailey. Uh, her journey and what she's gone through, I was like, wow. Like, yeah. it's almost similar, mm. just, like, different, because mine's in a sport. She's an artist. Yeah. Um, Meg Thee Stallion, she's spoken about it. So, like, really, truly, anybody who has been able to use their voice yeah. in such a deep topic. Mm. Yeah. Well, you are also one of those oh. in that list. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last question. Okay. It's a tough one. Okay. I'm maybe ready. It's, maybe it's easy. Okay. If you could go back to one moment in your life, what moment would that be? And what would you say to yourself? If I could go back to one moment in my life. Oh, Jordan, do not cry. Um would be to when my aunt was alive and apologize for a lot of things that I wish I would have been able to say before she passed. Mm -hmm. That would be one thing. You make me cry. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Well, I think she's looking down on you and knows your heart. Thank you. So I think, I think she knows your heart and probably knew that too before. So thank you. Mm -hmm. So sweet. I think, I think this has actually been one of my most favorite interviews. Yeah. No, you're lying. I'm I'm dead serious. This has been <laughs> so fun. Yes. You are just I such a light and just so like <laughs> honest and like authentic. Like, thank you. You're just like I feel like we've been sitting here and like I mean maybe it was the Cheetah Girls harmonizing, <laughs> but I just feel started I started off on the right foot. Yeah, <laughs> I did. But you know, I feel like you know we have so many people through here, and especially like you know I don't I don't know like the thought of like having like an Olympian in our home, like talking to them, like it, it's intimidating, but also like you, you, you're just like very approachable and very authentic and just like, and also your wisdom and perspective is yeah. just, you know, beyond belief. Like it's just, Thank you. it's really amazing. You, like I, I learned a lot from you today. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know our listeners Coming from you. Gonna- oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. <laughs> getting hot in here <laughs> i love that it's so much it's so fun no but honestly i would say thank you to you guys so for real having me on you know your guys's podcast and 
just like the understanding of what it's like, like you guys understand, you know, where you've been in certain situations where you had to, you know, speak and do everything that you're doing and to be in the position for you to speak about it now and be able to, you know, tell the world what it was like. I think that's like what really brings the squeeze. No pun intended. Oh, <laughs> but <I'm> just... <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I think it's the opposite, though. Me being in your guys's house, like you don't understand I've been to met so many like people celebrity wise, like podcast wise. Like I think it's more so of just being able to be in a presence of you mm. rather than me being in your house. Truly. Oh, the feeling is mutual. We love you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. This Yay. was fun. And Woo. that's a wrap. <laughs> Squeeze out. Squeeze out. Let's go film our cheetah girls. TikTok. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so down. <laughs> Like we said, quite a phenomenal conversation. Quite a phenomenal. Thank Jordan. you, Jordan. We love you so much. Um, I can't wait to hang out with you again because yes, we miss you. We just had the most amazing time with you, and we hope that you guys enjoyed that as much as um, we did. Again, if you haven't seen the TikTok, um, please go check it out. You can head Very to proud of it. Um, our social medias at the Squeeze on Instagram at the Squeeze Podcast on. TikTok, you can follow us along there. Uh, as always, you can check out Lemons by Tay on Instagram and lemonsbytay.com for additional resources. You can email Lautner at, wait, what is it? Lautner.thesqueeze podcast at gmail.com. Lautner.thesqueeze podcast at gmail.com. I got a little carried away there. Oh. Um, with any guests you want to see, we got a lineup of guests that you guys have submitted. Um, and we are just going down, going down that checklist. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're rocking with it. We're rocking. Hello, we're hello, hello. And goodbye, goodbye, <laughs> goodbye. I hope you guys have a great Wednesday. See you next week, week, week. <laughs>